The Oscar nominations are out, and what do you know, it's steeped in controversy. The damn thing's only had a nomination shortlist, and people are upset again. And so am I. I'm not surprised, but I am. There has of course been the mainstream news about the whole Barbie snubbing in regards to best director and best actress and all that, but also on the side of things, not so surprisingly, Animation has been kicked right back into its lane. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has been snubbed for Best Picture. That was an option at one point. An animated movie set for the Best Picture category. That sounds great. There is no animation in Best Picture anymore. And I mean, in fairness to the Academy, it's only animation, right? So it's not even a real movie. Whilst I am not a guy who really values the Oscars as a ruling authority of merit, if anything it's the perfect symbolism of the old school Hollywood elitist fashion of looking at things, and it's only going to be shown more as we go into the details of this Oscar nomination news, it is still disappointed to see them miss out on this acknowledgement of an animated movie displaying genuine excellence in filmmaking. And I get it, not everyone thought that it should have been nominated, but it was in the long list for the Golden Globes, I should clarify. And I thought it could at least make the short list, but no, it's not even being snubbed in the ceremony. They don't get to enter the halls. Okay, well they do elsewhere, but anyway, we'll get there. Now, this is not the first time that animation has had a little bit of a underrepresentation at the Oscars. It's kind of just a running thing. They were given their own category once and never peaked out since. But with the nomination shortlist now reaching up to 10 movies, it really is a shame that nothing has a chance of popping out to be expressed for the gratitude of creating great art, you know? And with this one, it particularly sticks out. I mean, I remember when this came out in the summer, this was initially seen as a lock-in for Best Picture nomination. It pushes the boundaries in so many ways. And I get it, right? Barbenheimer was a big deal. That's where a lot of the attention has gone, for better and for worse. Oppenheimer is likely to win the actual category of Best Picture. And Barbie deserves all the acknowledgement it gets. Barbie as well, of course, getting its own problems. It has been nominated for Best Picture and Best Supporting Actress and Best Supporting Actor, but it's heard nary a whisper in regards to director and Greta Gerwig or the main actress protagonist in Margot Robbie. It's got a nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay and Best Original Song, again, another Ken thing. Also Best Costume Design and Best Production Design. But at the same time, pretty much all of those nominations are also identically matched with Oppenheimer. And they get all sorts of extras on the side as well, like film editing and sound. I mean, more than ever, it really does seem like that horrendously executed speech from Joe Coy at the Golden Globes, correlating Oppenheimer as the next best masterpiece and Barbie as Big Booby Lady, really does reflect how the actual Academy members seem to view this sort of cinema. And though, of course, I am on the side of Barbie getting even more representation since they clearly pushed a boundary of their own, I also kind of think that Spider-Verse could have beaten it at least on the best picture front. They both deserve massive amounts of support and gratitude, and I think Spider-Verse is even better, and they're both getting snubbed, it's gah. But then again, I think there's been many years when an animated movie has been amongst the best output of their respected year, and just not been put amongst those other kind of films. With some infamous moments from the ceremony itself over the years, it does seem to stem from a lot of people in the industry, i.e. the Academy voters who are all qualified to vote for the Best Picture category, who simply do not see animation as something even on the same playing field as live action. Remember the time that three actors dressed as princesses said, animations for kids? The same year one of the nominees was a dark drama about a refugee escaping the Soviet Afghanistan war? Probably not, as then a little known actor called Will Smith went on to physically assault a comedian for telling a joke before accepting an award to rapturous applause. But nonetheless, this sentiment's incredibly apparent. We'll get back to the Spider-Verse and Barbie in a little bit, but for now, let's get started with the actual best animated movie category. I am meant to be sticking to animation after all. What we have in the lineup is The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Well, at least it's represented there. The big absence here is, obviously, the Super Mario Bros. movie. And whilst I really enjoyed the movie, it was a somewhat straightforward story that played it safe and, to be fair, wasn't really gunning for the Oscar nomination. It was great, 
when your standard is illumination movies. You know, I'm a little surprised. I thought it would have a lot more networking attachments, but you know, it's fair. And also Disney Wish has disappeared off the list. Mwah, thank goodness it's not a total Disney takeover. Plus with the Mario movie, it's an animation based on a product. So why are we surprised after Lego Movie got completely snuffed in 2015? That was a movie that should have won that year. But no, apparently it was just a soulless commercial. So just give it to Big Hero 6 or something. Also, another fun fact, um, Big Hero 6 was also given it over How to Drain Your Dragon 2. <laughs> what a wild year that was. I guess following that trend, I guess it's all but guaranteed that Pixar's Elemental will really win Best Animated Feature. But anyway, with no nomination for Mario, let's focus on the other ones that are a little bit more relevant still. We'll start with the one that I don't think will win, but will be a real incredible story if it does. That's right, it's a long time discussed movie on this channel, Nimona. Whilst there's been a lot of debate on how good the movie turned out in the end, I personally really enjoyed it and its nomination is a true success story, considering the ride this production went on. From being buried by Disney shutting down Blue Sky Studios to Netflix rescuing the project, the fact that it's now an Oscar-nominated movie alone is something well deserved by everyone who worked on it and just an incredible tale on its own. Plus, having a movie that's so unapologetically queer-coded being nominated is never a bad thing. Can't wait for that to be snubbed out of just pure demographics. If the Academy can't even get over female movie, they're never gonna get anywhere close to this. In a time where there's so much discrimination and transphobia being normalized, acknowledgements like this for projects with such positive representation really do make a difference. You don't even need the golden trophy at this point. The nomination alone should hopefully be a massive accolade everyone should take home. But whilst I liked this movie, it's definitely not my pick from the nominations, but I'm absolutely all for it being nominated. Can we revive more cancelled movies and give them Oscars? Because that's also just a great prompt. <sighs> Thank you for making it halfway through this video. Come subscribe if you want to see more. I'm going to cover more of the Oscars as more news of the Oscars comes out. But also now that I'm back from my holiday, I'm going to try and make as much uploading as I can this year. A video every one to two days. I'll keep it going for as long as I can. Till, till like August. I don't know. We'll see. Thank you for watching this far in. I'll let you get back to the video. I appreciate you for getting at least halfway. On to the Oscars. That was very crappily done, but I'm going with it. Next up is Pixar's Elemental. Now, this movie was seen as another damp note in Pixar's canon, if you'll pardon the pun. However, again, I really enjoyed the movie. Whilst it's not their best, it's a solid and charming story that is incredibly personal to the director behind it. Unlike a lot of other 2023 Disney products, it is not a hollow cash grab. I was a massive critic of it back in the trailer days because this movie was marketed incredibly poorly, but to find out it's actually a really eloquent immigration story, I think it all comes together really, really nicely. It also has the major Disney referrals, so on my perspective that the Academy is just a bunch of networking, I actually think this is a big contender to succeed, not because it's good, but because it's got connections. And hey, it already worked last time with Big Hero 6, which was a direct Disney movie. Why wouldn't it happen to a slight side story of Pixar on the side? Still, again, I'm glad it's here. I don't think it should win an Oscar, as much as it might have a very solid chance. And even beyond the Disney vouch, lots of voters in this category have historically favoured more Disney produced content rather than non-Disney movies, so it just lines up in an unfortunate way. Moving on, this next one I haven't actually honestly seen. This is Robot Dreams, which is a Spanish-French production that has traditional hand-drawn animation, which is great to see. Even more interesting, for those sometimes put off by having to read subtitles, the movie is completely non-verbal, making it more universal in appeal, more accessible for a lot of people, and a nice throwback to the silent era as well. Plus, I just love non-verbal storytelling. You see it all the time in different animated shorts and for like 60% of Wally, -E, and that's like one of my top three Pixar movies. Similarly, Shaun the Sheep's been flying that flag for a bit, so it's just nice to see some more animated productions taking that kind of approach. It's so incredibly artsy and deserves an Oscar way more than the snub it's likely walking into. Based on a comic of the same name, this movie is about the friendship between a robot and a dog and described as a tragic comedy. Just a wild guess, uh, one of these characters will die at the end. I just have that vibe, you know? But you're not allowed to cry with any words, only sounds. It's also based on a comic, so that's another victory to that art form being acknowledged for more than just superhero movies. Nice. And the final movie on this list is certainly a favorite, namely as it actually won the Golden Globe for Best Animated Movie last month, this is The Boy and the Heron. Again, a super top contender considering the attachment to Hayao Miyazaki, who's not actually too into award ceremonies, but is the kind of perfect person you would shower in trophies to acknowledge, you know? 
And whilst there's a whole load of stuff on why the Golden Glows is a complete garbage fire organization that's done some questionable stuff, there's no denying that they usually give an indication of where the industry's leaning for certain awards. The Boy and the Heron is the latest from Studio Ghibli and is, more importantly, directed by the legendary Hayao Miyazaki himself. The guy originally retired in 2013 and is now 83 years old. It's a true wonder he's still putting out work at this standard, but you know, I kind of feel like I'll be the same when it comes to retirement age. He's also been working on this film since 2016, so I'm just glad that it all worked out, to be honest. Described as a big fantastical film, it follows a boy during the Pacific War who discovers an abandoned tower in his new town after his mother's death and enters a fantastical world with a talking grey heron. I've talked about it a few times on the channel already. With similar fantastical beats to Spirited Away, combined with the undeniably weighted and tragic premise, it's very much in line with other Studio Ghibli territory. Whilst critical response was initially mixed, the reception's ultimately been positive, and it's now one of the favourites to win the Oscars. And whether this movie has the ability to be snubbed by just the closest movie attached to Disney, this would certainly be a fantastic way to round out Miyazaki's career. Just a shame they couldn't spare the Master Craftsman a Best Picture nomination as well, eh? Seriously, it's another example of an animated movie that was in the long list for it for the Golden Globes, I should clarify. And now there's no such thing. But speaking of which, here's my favourite to win personally, at no one's surprise, it's Spider-Man Across the Snubiverse. Ah boy. With that Best Picture nomination missing, it feels like a charity case for it to at least win this. Though again, Boy and the Heron could well take it, or Elemental. You've heard my thoughts. However, with many deeming this follow-up better than the first movie, which won the award last time, it is definitely the favourite going into this, threading together amazing character drama that all ages can relate to between multiverses spanning stakes and action. This movie overcame one hell of a balancing act and truly pushed the boundary of how to make an artsy animated film. For a sequel to feel this fresh in a time when all the live action stabs that followed the first film completely sucked the joy out of multiversal stories, the Spider-Verse team re-entered the game showing everyone how it should be done. After everything everywhere all at once is slam dunk victory last year, I was hoping this year would continue the trend of more bold choices of nominations. And with Barbie at least getting Best Picture, I think they have, whilst also kicking down the females that actually produced it. Give all the platforms to Ken's instead. This seems to be their motto. However, while I don't think it would have won, it would have been nice to see Spider-Verse acknowledged amongst the big players, or even Studio Ghibli, just to prove that animation should be acknowledged at the top of the filmmaking tree. After it literally became a controversial talking point last year, you really would have thought there would have been a bit more care put into what they're making. But seriously, the Academy can't even work out how to give proper gratitude to the female creators in the industry, so maybe I really am asking too much. Hmm. The last time an animated movie won Best Picture was back in 2010 with Pixar's Toy Story 3. So we've been waiting long enough, folks. Here's hoping anyway. If you can't enjoy the genuine awards, you can laugh at how stupid, controversial, and out of touch the whole thing is anyway. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a little bit.